well, this weather is really cold and it's affecting a lot of people, but it's not just people that it's affecting. It's also the cold that's affecting your home. We've got home inspector Alden Reed. Thank you for being here with us. Thanks for having me. Let's talk a little bit about this. Ob obviously, you're going to give us some tips on you know ourselves and our homes and stuff like that. Do Let's talk about the different styles of homes and the unique issues that every house gets. Well, first of all, the weather affects a, your house, not just yeah. in the wintertime, but all the time. Yeah. So in the summertime, however, it's easy to fix, yeah. right? So if you get a rainstorm, then you can deal with it. It's not too uncomfortable. But in the wintertime, it's, it's a lot more difficult. Yeah. And if you're laying under your trailer at minus 40, then you know, I should have fixed this sooner. Yeah, definitely. A lot of people, I'm sure, you know, look at their houses. One person who had like a, a frozen wall. Yeah. when they moved a, a dresser and so it was frostbite mm -hmm. how did that get in like how does how does cold get into your home yeah well first of all there's there's different types of homes yeah. so the the standard home is well insulated the homes that most of us live in today are newer yeah. so the insulation package and everything is in pretty good condition mm -hmm. uh, we build our homes to be safer and and warmer yeah. and healthier yeah. today but you know not all homes were like that so probably there's some houses in Lloyd here that are probably 100 years old. So yeah. I would say in the 1920s to the 1960s, your home wouldn't have had a real great insulation package. Yeah. And it might not have had um, vapor barrier, most likely wouldn't have vapor barrier. So you might see frost coming through the wall, like yeah. you said, yeah. um, because the vapor barrier is not there to stop it. And uh, condensation forms. Sometimes the light switch covers are, are frosted up and you touch them and they're cold. Yeah. So that's all pretty common stuff. Speaking of that, how? does that affect your health in terms of being at home, all this cold is coming into your home? It, it does affect you somehow, right? For sure. Yeah. Well, a lot of people like to get closed up in their home, so they shut their house right up and they get in there and they wrap up in a blanket and they don't want to leave till spring. Yeah. And I understand that. But uh, when you're all closed up in your house like that, you oftentimes, especially in the older homes, so if your home is built in the 50s, let's say, your fresh air intake is not as good as it would be in a home yeah. built today. So as a result you're breathing the same air over and over again you're reheating the same air over and over again and by doing that as well you're you're drying the air out yeah. so if when you dry that air out it causes your throat to be sore sometimes you wake up in the morning your mouth is dry and uh, unless you have some sort of a humidif humidification yeah. system but most people don't and that even gives you uh, makes you more susceptible to to uh, colds yeah. and flu yeah and all other types of respiratory problems. Isn't that interesting? We never think about that kind of stuff, but obviously there's a lot of recommendations you can do in the in homes that we have here. Obviously you're from Nova Scotia, you were saying, it's a bit different there. They have rock kind of, you know, yeah. they have bricks for homes, right? It is like different. In terms of making their homes, yeah. Yeah, well, and, and even here there's different homes. So okay. you could live in a home that's uh, 1960s, like I said, that's not as well insulated, that's drafty and so on, but you might also live in a trailer. Yeah. And right now, people who live in trailers, especially the older trailers that were built, say, in the 1970s to the late 80s, yep. they weren't insulated very well. They didn't have very good windows. And under the belly, the belly bag, the, the, where the insulation and all the piping is, yep. that particular area ha is susceptible to the cold. So you have to do what you, uh, basically, you have to keep it insulated, you have to heat trace and all that sort yep. of stuff. So even acreages, you could have uh, wells and septics. Yep that cause problems in the cold weather. Yeah. If everything is done right, you generally don't have a problem. Which is but even then, sometimes you have problems. And when it happens in the wintertime, yeah. you don't want to be digging up your septic, for instance, in the wintertime. It's yeah. very costly. For sure. So, you know, there are things that you should not do, obviously, when you have this. And I mean, you mentioned a few, but yeah. yeah. Well, first of all, when, when you discover a problem, don't panic. Yeah. Because it took a while for that ice to form in your water lines, let's say and it's gonna take a while for you to thaw it out. Yeah. But if you panic and you go at it like you wanna fix it in half an hour, maybe a lot of people would use an open flame. Yeah. You don't wanna be doing that. That's, that's a fire hazard. In particular, you don't wanna climb under your trailer, for instance, and start that flame up, uh, because a lot of people burn their houses down doing that. Oh, for sure. So you don't wanna be doing that. Um, other things that you don't wanna to do to create heat in your home is maybe if you have a wood stove don't burn things in your wood stove that are not designed to be burned yeah. it's a certified system that is designed for wood the manufacturer the, the model uh, the manual rather will tell you how to do it yeah. if you go outside of that norm then you could have problems but don't bring in a construction heater right Smart, yeah. you know a propane construction heater for instance uh, will give off carbon monoxide 
Um, think it through. Ask yourself, what's the safest way to do this? Take it easy. Slow it down. You know, and uh, the big thing really with with cold weather is we know it's coming. It comes every year. Yeah. It's predictable, right? If you think that you're going to live in Canada and not have cold weather, especially in Lloydminster, you are going to have cold weather. So be prepared ahead of time. Yeah. Don't wait until it's minus 40 to react, react because sure. it's going to be costly and it's yeah. going to it's going to be hard for you it's to deal with hard. it then. We are running out of time, but I do I do want to ask you where people can get a hold of you. I knew you were talking about being very thorough in helping people, and you have a competition, $100 or something like that, some kind yes, of thing yep. that's happening on your website. Yes, on my Facebook page, actually, okay. uh, Border Home Inspections. If you join the conversation, and uh, which is called Ask the Inspector Group, yep. just ask a question, and I'll try to do my best to answer it. The nice thing about being a home inspector in Lloydminster over a long period of time like I have is I've got a great network of, of good people, yeah. plumbers and electricians and, and builders. If I don't know the answer, then I'll get you the answer. And it's all free. Yeah. So if you join that conversation between now and February 5th, then you're entered into a draw for a $100 gift card. Beautiful. To your restaurant of your choice. Beautiful. That is awesome. Make sure to check it out. Uh, home Inspection with Alden Reed. Thank you so much for being here with us. Border Home Inspections. Beautiful.